Hello, welcome to JLo Artist YouTube channel. Today we'll be doing some drawing. Remember, art makes life better. Okay, um, we're going to be using oil pastels for this. And your palette, I love how they've set out their palette. Because it goes from the light to dark. And remember when we're dealing with color, value is more important than color, really. So if you've, if you've got your light to dark, this is going to be, this is pretty awesome. And you, you think about cool colors in the lights, and, or excuse me, cool colors in the shadows and warm colors in the lights, then uh, that, that'll, that should work out really well. So I, I like how they've set out their palette. Try to keep it kind of this way. So as you take them out, sometimes I'll put them in my other hand. Kind of put them together back together this way um we're going to be using white charcoal to get everything on there and the the scrap we've chosen is is very moody so it's a dark chiaroscuro kind of a thing um and her head it's just about smack dab in the middle of the page so you can kind of delineate where everything goes you can make little marks sometimes i'll make a little mark and say okay is that the size I want it? Is that as big as I want it? So I've got my head. There's my neck. My torso is going to be about down to about down to there. And then there's the that bottom part of the torso okay so here's some armor terms for you the breastplate you know where the breastplate is and then that thing that goes below it is called a fold so the fold is down there and then below that fold you have the hand so the fold is about right in here and then the hand dips down and touches that edge almost the big shoulder pieces are called pauldrons She's only got one arm on. The other arm isn't on. It's all covered up by hair anyway. So that that pauldron, is the shoulder piece, that kind of comes out. And there's a lot of it that you can't see. So I'm just drawing the parts that I can see. Start lining things up, things like where the fingers are, if you go straight under the chin, go straight down, that's about where the fingers end. So if you start lining things up that way, it usually helps to get your proportions. And again, you want to push yourself to draw as quickly as you can. Don't worry about details right here. You're just blocking in stuff. So, like, I'm going to block in where the, the eyes go, where the nose is. Those are important. But I don't want too much information in there because i got to draw it with pastel. So, I'm just blocking it in. I can figure out where everything else goes from there. These are guidelines. They're like the Pirate's Code. It's a guideline. Even the hair, if you wanted to, block in some of the hair. But nobody cares if that hair is out. I'm not even going to worry about it. If that hair is in a different position, nobody cares. But if the eye is in a different position, then everybody knows it. And they'll all tell you about it, too. Even if you meant it to happen, they'll tell you. Everybody's a critic. So there's the hand. I just blocked it in. Those, those are the fingers that are light. And there's part that goes back there. That I can figure out. The pommel of the sword, which is that that little disc shape that's in the back. It's got a little highlight on it. I'll figure that out. Then you go straight down from the pommel through the hand, through the cross guard, 
and maybe just do a little line there. Try to get as straight as you can. Use a ruler if you have to. You don't have too much distance between the hand and the head. If you look at the thickness of the head, and then you just take that over here and do just a little bit more than the thickness of the head. You probably got it. You don't want to be out too far. And if it's a little closer, that's okay because your arm will do that. If you wanted to, you could add a, just a little bit of charcoal to the light areas. And you do that just like we do with the chiaroscuro. Just a little bit. So if you wanted to, you could do a little bit of that light in there. Just to help you to see how things are, where things are. Get your proportions in. This is a difficult thing to do. So again, if it helps, use that charcoal to get a little bit of the highlights in there. Try to get that chiaroscuro kind of a look going. Remember that charcoal erases fairly easily if you don't grind it into the surface. So try to try to keep from grinding it into the surface. Look at the shapes of the light. All I'm doing is putting putting in those light shapes. Can't even see the handle of the sword, so just don't draw it in. And if you don't see it, don't draw it in. I'm just going to delineate the hair just a little bit, the highlights, the lightest areas.
the rest of it, I'm not going to worry about. We'll get that later if we need it. You can do pastels on just about anything. There's there's certain papers that work out really well with pastels. There's a type of paper that's kind of canvassy feeling. It's called campus paper. That works out really well. Like I say, that velvet works out great. She almost looks like she's underwater. That would be cool to do something like this and have her be underwater, have a little fish in there. She could be the Lady of the Lake. That could be Excalibur. What's the Lady of the Lake's name? Vivian? She could be Vivian. You guys know who I'm talking about, right? King Arthur legend. I don't know if I need any of that in there, but The rest of this, I'm going to just get with my oil pastels. Remember, if you can't see an edge, just leave it out. When in doubt, leave it out. Now, what color would you use with your pastels? What's the first color you'd use? Yeah, you have that mode of thought. Do you do you start with the white and do all the light areas first, and then add color to them? Um, you know, that, that's that's one way of doing it. That's a mode of thought. It's kind of up to you how you do that. I probably start something fairly light. So when I'm looking through my colors, sure, I could start with white and just do the highlight and the light areas and then kind of add some other colors to it. I could I could do that. Um, there's a little fleshy tone colors, this this peach or what's it called? Pale orange, kind of a salmon-y color. Uh, that is probably pretty good for some of those those uh, details up in there. I wouldn't probably use it in the armor. I could use it though in the face, in the hand over here. The armor, I'd probably use white. I'd go ahead and use white. And then I'd add some purple and blue to that. Uh, remember, colors colors important, but value is more important. So maybe that's what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll start with my white and just, just kind of go over everything that I've done already and just highlight things in. As far as the hair goes, there's no really bright, bright lights in the hair. So I kind of leave that that way. But I think in the flesh, go through with my my white. When you stroke your, your pastels, you'll notice, first of all, how smooth they are. You can use back and forth. You can do little circles, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm just doing little circles here. That kind of helps it grind into the surface. And I really want to concentrate on the highlight or the lightest areas. Yes, you're going to have a little bit of grain in there. If you press hard, you're going to get rid of some of that grain. But don't worry about the grain. As you layer in colors, it'll smooth out. It'll fill in that little grain area. And pastels really, you, I'm sure you can get them smooth, but I don't know if they're meant to be smooth. So don't worry about it. 
And you don't need a heavy touch with pastels. It's very light. Like I say, I'm trying to get the chiaroscuro kind of a look. Light and dark. This is why when we started the class, we did value more than color. Now, color is important, but value is still the primary thing that we're, we're looking at. Just light touch. I always try to get more detail probably than I should because I, I really like detail. If you make a mistake, try your try that little click eraser. It does erase some of it. You got to be a little, little persistent with it. But. There's little areas that I think, ooh, I don't want much white in there. Just very lightly, just stroke the top just a little bit. And if it's really dark, just leave it out. You can always come back in later. If they had background in this, if there was a background, you'd want to do the background first. got a little necklace there if you can't put that necklace in because the material is too clunky don't worry about it you can always take your eraser or you can take a little knife like an exacto knife and scratch out the surface so that that can be a kind of a fun way to get some detail in there too
I suppose you could do this with crayons even. Crayons aren't quite as smooth and not as opaque as as oil pastels. But you could. I mean, there's you, you can do good art with just about anything. And also remember your your charcoal is a guide. You don't have to stick with it, you can change it. You can alter it. You can We want this to look better than the photograph. We want it to be colorful. You know, maintain your maintain your darks and lights, but still be colorful. Cool thing about chiaroscuro is there's so much dark and it's already done for you. You don't even have to touch it. You just leave it out. I like that. Whenever I go to, like, every now and then I'll go to, like, the Leonardo and do a life drawing. They always have it very dark. And so you've got, it's, it's almost chiaroscuro as it is anyway. So it's cool to just Get a dark piece of paper and do your lights and I don't know if you guys noticed the farther I get away from her face the more loose I am more spontaneous I am and I kind of I don't know it's it's nice because I don't have to worry about it it's 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 almost uh, relaxing I also, just one of the little things that I do, I turn and twist my my pastel so I always have the edge and I know where that edge is. Sometimes you, you start going like this, then all of a sudden you lose your edge. You're like, where is that darn edge? So now I'm ready for color. And I, I don't know where you want to go with this color. Um, I can start out with kind of an orangey, kind of this this flaming orange it's called yellow orange maybe that's what I want to do my highlights in my hair with so it's kind of a yellowy orange I know that if I'm going to add some red to it it's 
going to look a little more red. I can do my highlights with that. So it's called it's called yellow orange. It's just the lightest kind of orangey. It's not the yellow yellow one. But if you look at it, you think, oh, okay, that's kind of orangey. Her hair's kind of orangey. Tomatoey. Yeah. So oddly enough, I'm a ginger. I had red hair when I was a kid. Mine was never really bright red, never like this. It was kind of that deep red. But that's a tough color to get when you're painting and make it look natural. I don't know, there's so many reds are not natural looking. This is yellow orange, yellow, yellow orange, that's what it's called. And so I'm just kind of getting some of those highlighty areas. And you'll probably notice too that it's it's not being too affected by mixing with the charcoal. Charcoal's not gonna the white charcoal's not gonna affect this that much. Then you could add in more reds. You could go with that vermilion, which is kind of a warm red. And you could even go with the deeper, richer red, and maybe even a little bit of purple in there. This is vermilion. It's kind of a warm red. And you just kind of go around, but you want to leave those lights. Don't go over the lights that you did. You want to just leave them out. So that's the vermilion, and that looks pretty good. Then you may want to take it a step darker and go with that. It's just called red. You may want to have a little bit of that in there. That's a little bright. You may want to just... But I like the vermilion. The vermilion is really nice. But the red itself goes quite dark against the black. So that's your color for the hair. And maybe if you see some, like there's some areas that are, look like they're in the shadow, maybe a little bit of purple in there might work. I'm going to try that just to see. If it doesn't work, I'll get rid of it. But I don't mind a little bit of that purple in there. It's very dark, but it's not black. You can hardly see it. Yeah, it's just kind of a, it's just purple. It's called purple. You can also, if you want to smooth it out a little bit, you can use your finger or a cotton swab to kind of just rub it a little bit. That'll tone it down a little bit. That'll make it a little darker. So that's your basic colors, I think, for the hair. I can come back into the hair a little bit too. For your flesh tones, your basic flesh tones, um, you're going to want that salmon-y color. It's called pale orange. Oh, to me, it looks like salmon. That would be a lovely color up in here. And maybe a little bit of yellow up in there with that. So this is that, it's called pale orange, but it looks salmon to me. My camera's not picking it up very well. But you could even put a little bit of that yellow in there. This. Uh, chrome yellow just a little bit just a little bit up in there I'm gonna try some orange up in there at this point this is what I often do is I'll try something here and there and if it works out great if not yeah I either have to erase it or um, try something different this is orange, a little orange, a little bit of yellow. This is chrome yellow. I'm gonna just try it and see what happens. Ooh, I like that. I like the orange, I like the chrome yellow together. A little bit of that pale orange, 
that salmon -y color. And again, you can take your finger if you want to and smudge it a little bit. You don't want to do that too much because you'll take away some of the spontaneity of the colors. But you can do that a little bit. It's really hard to see up here, but this is yellow. I, you can see it better back here in, in the real life. That vermilion, if you want to do some, some kind of fleshy tones, start with the vermilion in the shadow. Some of that you could probably just leave it right there in the shadow. Others, you may want to do a little bit of that, um, that para orange. In the eye, I always use a little bit of this light blue. So the white part of the eye that isn't white, use a little bit of light blue in there. Because it's not, it's not white. As far as the eye goes, you can just kind of almost leave it out. just orange some of these areas that are very warm a little bit of that orange in there a little bit of rubbing with your your finger and you've got it Remember, don't try to blend it. Don't try to make it smooth. Just layer it one over the other. The last one you layer in is going to be the dominant one. So I'm just kind of smudging some of this with my finger that, that gets some of that dark color that's in there. I don't know what else you'd smudge it with if you didn't use your finger. I, I suppose you could try a cotton swab or something, but it doesn't take much. Once you get the hang of it, it'll go much faster. You 
camera's not picking up all my colors. Is that better? It might even be advantageous for us sometimes to take out the color so that we're not influenced by the colors that are already there. A little bit of purple in some of those really dark areas might be nice. Um, I've, I've tried this too where you could scrape it like take an exacto knife and scrape it that works too either way So this is just some of that red, just red, red, a little bit of that orangey stuff, and then some of that that pale orange, and then I just took my finger, and went whoop, and that blended those edges together. I haven't used anything really dark yet. This is a little bit of that purple in there. That purple makes a lovely shadow. Whatever you layer on top, it's going to be the dominant one. Yeah, I'm going to try some blue. This is that just pale blue that's going to be some of the light stuff in the armor areas. That kind of looks good. Maybe some of that purple in there, purple with the blue. That's kind of nice. A little smudge. You got it. He's cake. Once you get done with the face, everything else can kind of be fast. Because once that picture was taken, that hair moved. The eyes didn't move. The hair did.
really like the purple in there next to the to the white and then a little bit of blue and then just give it a smudge and you got it and if it's dark just leave it out Probably 101 ways to do pastels just like anything else. I would say experiment. Well, what makes it right for you? I think once you start doing it and you get your colors in there, you think, oh, I like that color. I'm going to add more. See, that's, that's kind of nice, too. cool thing is our initial drawing with the white charcoal does not impede this it doesn't doesn't hurt it at all black charcoal probably would it probably make it muddy that white charcoal has been so nice to work with I wonder if some of that kind of old rose, that kind of purpley color would be nice in some of those flesh tones as well. You can try that. The colors I use aren't aren't the perfect colors. What's most important is the values that you throw in there. Try some of this purple in there. We've only got about a minute left. And again, you can carry this on further, but it's a great start. I think we figured out the colors we wanted to use. That worked out great. Hope you have a lovely day. Remember our mantra, art makes life better. <laughs>